During the final stages of World War II, precisely on August 6, 1945, at around 8.16 a.m., a groundbreaking event unfolded as the United States dropped a nuclear bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Named Little Boy, this uranium-235 bomb possessed an explosive yield equivalent to about 15,000 tons of TNT. For example, a small hand grenade might have an explosive power of a few hundred grams of TNT equivalent. But the difference between a nuclear bomb and a hand grenade is like the difference between the world's largest tsunami and draining out your backyard swimming pool. The aftermath was devastating, with an estimated 140,000 to 150,000 lives lost by the end of 1945, encompassing both immediate casualties and those succumbing to injuries and radiation-related illnesses. Some survivors recall seeing the Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber, scouting over Hiroshima minutes before the explosion. A mere three days later, another bomber, the Boxcar, was flying over Nagasaki, ready to drop the second bomb. At around 11.02 a.m. on August 9, 1945, history repeated itself when the United States dropped a second atomic bomb on the city of Nagasaki. Codenamed Fat Man, this plutonium-239 bomb possessed an explosive yield equivalent to about 21,000 tons of TNT. The repercussions were equally catastrophic, with an estimated 40,000 to 80,000 deaths by the end of 1945, including immediate casualties and radiation-related fatalities. These bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki remain unparalleled, standing as the sole instances of nuclear weapons used in warfare. Nuclear bombs work by utilizing detonators to trigger the explosion of conventional explosives. In the case of nuclear bombs like the ones used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uranium-235 undergoes a process called nuclear fission, releasing an immense amount of energy resulting in a powerful explosion. The war between the United States and Japan in World War II was primarily caused by a series of events and escalating tensions in the years leading up to the conflict. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Japan underwent a process of rapid modernization and industrialization. With a growing population and limited resources within its borders, Japan's leaders sought to secure access to raw materials and establish a sphere of influence in East Asia. This desire for expansion was driven by economic, military, and nationalistic ambitions. In 1931, the Japanese Kwantung Army, without authorization from the Japanese government, staged an incident known as the Mukden Incident as a pretext to invade Manchuria, a resource-rich region in northern China. Japan quickly occupied Manchuria and established the puppet state of Manchukuo, effectively annexing the territory. This expansion marked the beginning of Japan's aggressive actions in China and heightened tensions in the region. In 1937, full-scale conflict erupted between Japan and China, leading to the Second Sino-Japanese War. The conflict started with the Marco Polo Bridge incident, which served as a pretext for Japan to launch a large-scale invasion of China. The war resulted in brutal military campaigns, war crimes, and widespread devastation in China, with millions of Chinese civilians killed, injured, or displaced. In response to Japan's ongoing aggression in China and its invasion of French Indochina in 1940, the United States, along with other Western countries, imposed economic sanctions on Japan. The most significant measure was an oil embargo, which severely limited Japan's access to crucial resources. The sanctions aimed to pressure Japan to halt its expansionist actions and withdraw from China. As tensions grew in the late 1930s, Japan sought allies to strengthen its position, and in September 1940, Japan joined Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy in signing the Tripartite Pact. This agreement created the Axis powers, formalizing an alliance between the three nations. By joining the Axis, Japan aligned itself with the aggressive policies of Germany and Italy. Faced with the economic pressure of the U.S. sanctions and determined to secure vital resources in Southeast Asia, Japan, under the leadership of Emperor Hirohito, who was 25 years old at the time, decided to launch a preemptive strike on the U.S. Pacific Fleet stationed at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The attack aimed to disable the U.S. Pacific Fleet and give Japan a strategic advantage in its planned expansion in the Pacific region. On December 7, 1941, Japanese aircraft attacked Pearl Harbor, inflicting significant damage on the U.S. fleet and causing a high number of casualties. The attack inflicted severe damage to the U.S. naval assets, destroying battleships, aircraft, and other military infrastructure. Over 1,500 Americans were killed, and more than 1,000 were wounded during the assault. 
This surprise attack on Pearl Harbor served as the catalyst for the U.S. entry into World War II. Franklin D. Roosevelt was the U.S. president when Pearl Harbor was attacked. He addressed the nation on December 8, 1941 and asked Congress to declare war on Japan. Congress voted unanimously to declare war. Roosevelt had been warning the public about the threat posed by Japan for months. He had also been trying to negotiate a peaceful solution to the conflict. However, the attack on Pearl Harbor made it clear that Japan was not going to negotiate. Roosevelt believed that the United States had to go to war to protect itself and its allies. The declaration of war on Japan brought the United States into World War II. The war would last for four years and would result in the deaths of millions of people. However, it would also lead to the end of the Axis powers and the beginning of a new era of peace and prosperity. Roosevelt was the 32nd president of the United States, and he served from 1933 to 1945. He was a Democrat, and he was the longest serving president in American history. Roosevelt died in April 1945, just a few months before the war's end, and Vice President Harry S. Truman succeeded him as the 33rd President of the United States. Truman served from 1945 to 1953 and assumed the presidency without being elected to the position. He was a somewhat controversial figure during his tenure as president. He would ultimately make the decision to drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In July 1945, the United States, Great Britain, and China issued the Potsdam Declaration to Japan. This declaration demanded Japan's unconditional surrender or face prompt and utter destruction. Tensions were escalating and the world was on the edge of its seat. Now here comes the big question, should the United States use these powerful destructive weapons? It sparked heated debates among government officials. Some believed that dropping the bomb was the quickest way to force Japan to surrender, thus saving countless American lives that might have been lost in a full-scale invasion of Japan. They argued that ending the war swiftly was a top priority. On the other side, there were those who saw the atomic bomb as a cruel and inhumane weapon. They were deeply concerned about the potential civilian casualties and the long-term consequences of unleashing this new kind of warfare. The United States, now led by President Harry S. Truman, decided to move forward with the big decision. Five cities were initially chosen as targets for the bombing. They were Kokura, Hiroshima, Yokohama, Niigata, and Kyoto. However, Hiroshima was selected as the primary target of the first atomic bombing mission on the 6th of August because of its topography, with Kokura as the alternative target. And even though Nagasaki was not on the original list of the five primary targets, it was selected as the second target on the 25th of July, 1945, because it was agreed that Kyoto was to be removed from the list due to its historical, religious, and cultural significance. Nagasaki became the second target because it was a major military port and one of Japan's largest shipbuilding and repair centers. There were numerous other reasons that made Hiroshima and Nagasaki the primary targets. Firstly, both cities had significant military and industrial importance to Japan. Hiroshima was a major port city and an important military headquarters, while Nagasaki was a key industrial center and had a large shipbuilding industry. Furthermore, by the time of the bombings in August 1945, many Japanese cities had already been heavily damaged or destroyed by conventional bombing raids. However, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were two cities that had been largely untouched by previous attacks, making them suitable targets to assess the full destructive power of the atomic bombs. Moreover, from a military perspective, the U.S. wanted to observe the effects of both types of atomic bombs on different types of urban environments. For this reason, Hiroshima was chosen as the target for the uranium bomb Little Boy due to its flat terrain which would maximize the bomb's destructive impact. On the other hand, Nagasaki, being a hilly city, was considered a more suitable target for the plutonium bomb Fat Man, as the hilly terrain could help contain the explosion. The use of atomic bombs on two relatively untouched cities with large civilian populations was intended to send a powerful message to the Japanese leadership about the destructive capabilities of this new weapon and hopefully lead to a quick surrender. Ultimately, on August 6, 1945, the United States made the heart-wrenching decision to drop the bomb on Hiroshima. The city of about 350,000 population suffered immense devastation, with an estimated 140,000 lives lost. 
and just three days later, the second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, claiming another estimated 80,000 lives of its 263,000 population. The horror was unimaginable. The bombs exploded with colossal force, reaching a surface temperature of 7,700 degrees Celsius in just 0.2 seconds after detonation, creating a massive fireball that instantly vaporized everything in its path in seconds. The heat from the blast was so intense that it melted steel and concrete, and the shock wave from the blast leveled buildings for miles around. The world watched in shock, and the bombings led to Japan's surrender on August 15, 1945. The use of nuclear weapons played a significant role in Japan's decision to give up the fight. The United States won, but the bombings were met with widespread international condemnation. Many people believed that the use of nuclear weapons was a war crime. However, the United States defended its actions, arguing that the bombings were necessary to end the war and save lives. Even to this day, the decision to use nuclear weapons is still hotly debated. In the immediate aftermath of the bombings, the levels of radiation in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were so high that people were unable to live in the areas for months or even years. The radiation caused a variety of health problems, including cancer, leukemia, and birth defects. It also killed plants and animals and destroyed forests and crops. The environmental damage from the bombings has had a long-term impact on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The levels of radiation have declined significantly over time, but they are still higher than in other parts of the world. Even today, survivors from the bombing are still being referred to as Hibakusha, which is Japanese for explosion-affected person. However, Japan has recovered remarkably well. Within a few years, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were rebuilt. The Japanese economy also recovered and the country was once again a major economic power. Japan also became a major force in international affairs and it played a key role in the rebuilding of post-war Asia. The Japanese people have also shown remarkable resilience in the face of the psychological trauma of the atomic bombings. Many people who survived the bombings developed post-traumatic stress disorder, but they have found ways to cope with their trauma and to rebuild their lives. Today, Japan is a thriving country with a strong economy and a vibrant culture. The atomic bombings represent a dark chapter in Japanese history, yet the Japanese people have demonstrated to the world the transformative power of forgiveness and peace, showing that even in the face of immense adversity, they can rise above and create a brighter future. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to support us. Bye for now.